You're saying that Sutcliffe's murders were the copycat murders That's right. of the Irish Ripper murders. Yeah. Right. There was two men's murders mixed up. The police admitted that there was a copycat Ripper at large. They knew that after Sutcliffe's second victim was discovered. Right. And that was quite clearly on the record okay. by the police Ripper Squad. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying to you, Jerry, and to the people listening to me now who had to suffer the trauma and all the fear of this, was that ultimately when the police couldn't get their hands on the real Ripper who had also sent them the letters on the tape recording, they settled to close the slate, wipe everything off, by offering this disturbed man, Peter Sutcliffe, ten years in a luxury mental home if he would plead guilty to everything and he was guaranteed that he wouldn't have to stand trial and that he might get out of the mental home in ten years and he had a choice of either doing that or going to jail for life in the harsh regime in jail in Parkhurst, Isle of Wight uh, where he would be uh, uh, have a terribly hard regime naturally for one of his murders alone he could have got life in jail for that but he agreed to say I done them all in exchange for this deal and I have Mr. John Sutcliffe, Peter Sutcliffe's father, sitting here beside me now in the studio. Good morning, John. He morning, will John. confirm what I'm saying. Okay, I'll just move this. Yeah. Welcome to Ireland, John, and I'd like to thank you for coming over to help me in my campaign. Great pleasure. Great pleasure to come and, um, and help you, Noel. Now, I've been in touch with Noel for <clears throat> by, by letter for most of five years, and personally for the last three on about four occasions and I firmly believe that Noel has a very solid case and what, what do you base that on John? on the um, uh, well uh, you haven't yet mentioned the fact that Noel has put his story on tape mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that I've listened to these tapes all his evidence is collated on those four tapes it's uh, six hours listening and um, I've listened to all that uh, I've listened to Noel's explanations of why he started um, this campaign against this man, Mr. Uh, X. Mr. X, whom he knows personally and is um, apparently employed in the, in the past. Now, I'd also like to say now to all you listeners that I know, categorically, I know that my son did not do all the murders. How, how do you know that, John? I've heard, uh, by word of mouth, he's told us that he didn't do them all. Uh, how did he explain that to you? Well, in the first instance, he said, to his, he said to his two brothers and me when we visited him, when he was on remand, he said, you know, I didn't do them all. Right. In, the solicitor, in his solicitor's office, whilst he was on remand, I was told by a solicitor, Mr. Curry McGill, that Peter would not go for trial. He'd admitted to all the offences that had been put before him. He was going to plead guilty to everything. He was going to plead guilty to everything. And, exactly. normally, and normally there would not be a trial. And there would not be a trial. Uh, that there was a place for him in, uh, in the Liverpool... Um, for the Park Lane mental home. Right. 